Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. Have you ever had trouble coming up with a look or an idea in After Effects? Have you ever wished that After Effects had a Do My Work For Me button? Have you ever wished that you could just let your brain take lunch a few minutes early? Well, my lazy, uninspired friends, allow me to introduce you to Brainstorm. Brainstorm. A new feature in After Effects CS3 that can take your work and quickly generate variations on that work, ranging from the slightly different to, depending on your settings, the wholly unrecognizable. Now, Brainstorm, Brainstorm, in and of itself, doesn't do anything. You need a layer and some properties that you want to mess around with. So, to that end, here I am in After Effects with a Polystar Shape Layer, which, by the way, is another new feature in After Effects CS3 that, uh, time permitting, I'll cover at a later date. You may notice that some of the properties have some expressions in there as well. That's not an accident. Those expressions are there to create some animation, which we'll look at eventually. In addition, I also have some text in here. I'm not going to mess with the text, but I want it in there to make a point. Oh yeah, sometimes I have those. Sometimes. Anyway, brainstorm. Brainstorm. Okay, that really needs to stop. Sorry. As I was saying, Brainstorm can randomize values of several properties to help create variants or different settings for those properties, and it can display that randomization in a grid. You know what? Talk is cheap, so let's get into it. Before I actually do anything, let me just show you where you can find the Brainstorm button. It's right here in the timeline. It looks like a little brain with a lightning bolt coming out of it. That said, to make this easier to see, I'm going to tear off my composition timeline panel for this composition, and place it up here next to the composition window. Look, it ain't the best way to work, and I don't normally do this, but you know me. I'll suffer for my art. Or at least I'll slightly inconvenience myself. Okay, in my timeline, I'll select several properties from my shape layer. So, I'll select the points property, which determines how many points the star has, and I'll also select the inner radius, the outer radius, the inner roundness, and the outer roundness. Also, I'll select the pucker and bloat amount and the hue and saturation effect that I have here. Okay, with those properties selected, I'll hit the brainstorm button. And instantly, this brainstorm dialog opens showing me a grid with variants on my selected properties. Notice, by the way, that the text is included in the view even though it's a separate layer. Brainstorm shows you the composition, not just the single layer, which can be very helpful in seeing how your choices affect the entire composition. Okay, so here we are in our Brainstorm dialog, and we have a choice between nine different versions of our original shape layer. Let's take a look at some of the options here. First off, what if you don't like a single item here? Is that it? Is it time to give up on Brainstorm? To quote Balky Bartokamus, Well, of course not, don't be ridiculous. Wow, that is just going to fly by so many people. Anyway, if you don't like the choices Brainstorm has given you, just hit the Brainstorm button right here below the images of your composition. As you can see, this creates nine new Brainstorm images, and you can hit it again to create an additional nine more. Oh, but if you're like me, you might say, this isn't good. I kind of like that other image from the first page. Well, good news for the wishy-washy. You can just use these arrows to navigate through your Brainstorm session. Anyway, let's say you find one that you like, but it's not perfect. So, I can mouse over the image that I like, and I can click on this Include in Next Brainstorm button, which makes it part of the next Brainstorm calculation. And you know what? If you like more than one, you can mouse over a different one and do the same thing. As you can see, a little Include in Brainstorm icon appears over any items to be included in the next Brainstorm. Then, hit the Brainstorm button again, and alakazam, you have nine new iterations of your composition. Now, maybe you're thinking that this isn't random enough. Maybe you want your variations to really variate. Um, or vary if you actually have a good command of the English language, sorry. Well, you want randomness? You got it, pal. Right here in the randomness property, you can enter a value for variation. I'll set this up to 75%, and then I'll click on the brainstorm button again. And as you can see, there is a whole lot of variating going on. Oh yeah. Now, let's pretend that this shape layer was animated, and you wanted to see the animation play back. Well, hey, you can do that too. Just click on this play button right here, and each video will RAM preview and then play back. 
Keep in mind that this could take a while to preview since it's RAM previewing several videos at once. But if what you have is not too complex like what I have here, it may not take too long at all. Just a quick mention that you can also see what your brainstorm layer or layers look like over a transparent background by using this toggle transparency grid button. Okay, say you see something you think you like here. Maybe you want to get a closer look. If so, mouse over the item that you like and then click on the maximize button which expands the image. Of course you may find that you don't like the look when you see it up close. As the saying goes, good from far but far from good. Well in this case just mouse over it again and choose the restore tile size button. Anyway, let's say you really dig one of these bad boys and you want to use it in your composition. So mouse over the one you want to use and then choose the apply to composition button. Instantly your comp is updated to the new look. Now I'm going to undo that so that I can show you another feature of Brainstorm. Let's say you wanted to brainstorm on one property only, meaning you just wanted to see what a layer might look like if you varied one property. Well, you can do that in a much more organized way. And I'm going to point out that this only works with properties that have one parameter. So for example, opacity, which uses a single percentage value, but not scale, which has a separate value for X and Y. Anyway, select a property. In this case, I'll select the pucker and bloat amount, and I'll hit the brainstorm button. Then in the brainstorm dialog, take a look. Whereas before this property was randomness, it now says spread. What that means is that Brainstorm is not using random values. Instead, it's created a spread representing a range of values around the original value. If you take a look at our nine tiles here, you can see that the center tile shows the original composition with no change, but the surrounding tiles show a progression of the pucker and bloat property at rising and falling values, and depending on the spread value, it can be quite extreme. Right now it's set to 50%, but if I crank it up to 75%, you can see that we get more extreme variants. Of course you can brainstorm any one of these items as we already covered, but in this case you can use only one tile for the brainstorm operation. Once you've found a variant that you like, you may decide you don't want to change the original composition, but that you instead want it in a new composition. Well, mouse over the tile that you like and click on the Save as New Composition button. Nothing will seem to happen, but don't let that get you down the way it did me the first time I tried it. Trust me, it's been saved. You can even save multiple compositions so that you can try different variations. So I'll also click on the Save as New Composition button for this one as well. To get out of this, just click Cancel. And if you go into your project panel, you'll see that a new composition has been created for each time you use the Save button. If you go into the new composition, you'll see that all layers have been recreated, not just the layer whose properties you were brainstorming. Okay, two final notes. First, you can brainstorm the properties of more than one layer at a time. So if you have properties on two or more layers that you want to play around with, no big deal. Just select the properties you want to mess with and then go to town. Also, brainstorm does not work on all properties, alas. For example, you'll find that pop-up menu and checkbox items often can't be brainstormed on their own. But if you have another property selected, one with a numerical value, then they can be included in the operation. On the other hand, some properties such as a shape layer's gradient colors cannot be included in a brainstorm session at all. That's one of the reasons I use the hue and saturation effect in this tutorial. Now, Brainstorm may not be applicable for every situation, but it can be pretty useful. For example, you can take a preset that comes with After Effects, maybe one of these background presets such as the Deep Tissue preset, and use Brainstorm to create a background animation that looks different than what came out of the can, as it were. I'm not saying that you should rely on presets, but if you need a quick fix, it's an extra tool in your arsenal. Okay, that's it for Brainstorm. Brainstorm. Oh, I knew you were hiding back there somewhere. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net. Brainstorm. Come on. Hey, wake up. It's this time of the year when the flowers are blooming, the logos are flying. <laughs> okay. 
Hi everyone, my name is Serge Ahmad, a creative car leader among many other things, and uh, I will be guiding you through all your lessons in this new Creative Cow Master Series product. I created the Zachverse Invigorator Training Volume 1 to encourage you to do more than creating 3D text in After Effects with this powerful software. Is this possible? Well, Invigorator Money, the first Creative Cow Master Tools series, showed this already, but I thought I should now create a training that could help the newbie as well as the intermediate user to better understand the power of this software. The DVD contains around 3 hours of training material that will teach you in separate lessons how you could quickly create, manipulate and map different 3D objects right inside of After Effects. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at uh, creativecloud.net, After Effects or Zachvex forum, or email me at serge at nysvisual.com.